from toleratedcinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this awesome trailer title. Alright, so that looks pretty cool. If you don't wish to follow this tutorial or you want to support our YouTube channel, you can always buy this template with the link in the description so you can easily change the text and you're done. For those that do want to follow how this is created, let's fire up After Effects and get started. Alright, here we are in Adobe After Effects and the first thing that I will do like always is create a new composition. So go to composition, new composition, rename it main comp, make it full HD and 5 seconds long and I'll click OK. Then I will click on my text tool right here and click to add my text. Subscribe for more awesome content. So you know what you have to do. Uh, okay, so I will select my text right here and make my bottom text a little bit bigger. And you can go here and play with this as well. So it's all nice and tight and it actually fits well together. And then I will go to my selection tool and just uh, place it in center a little bit. I think it could be a little bit smaller. You could go and adjust it with the font size, but I will just click on S on my layer and press S on the keyboard and just lower the scale a little bit like so. Maybe for the top text, I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller because I think it's uh, it's a little bit too tight to the text as well. So maybe something like this. And also on my bottom text, I'm going to give it a little bit more spacing right here. And there we go. So this looks a little bit more, um, well, yeah, like I want it to be. Okay, so go to your Align tab right here. You can also go to Window align and then just click on these two buttons that's going to center out your text on average so and uh, now we have something like this then I will click on my text layer go to layer pre-compose and I will rename this to title click OK and there we go so now we can duplicate our text or before we do I will actually give this a nice color so for the top text uh, we're going to add a layer layer styles right here and a gradient Let's open up our gradient right here and go to edit gradient and we're going to add some colors to it. So uh, for the top black part, we're going to add like a dark kind of um, kind of orange brown like so. And then for the white, we're going to pick like a nice bright uh, kind of um, yeah orange kind of gold goldish color uh, something like this looks pretty cool uh, you could go and do it for two separate texts so they both have these gradients that could uh, look cool as well so if you want to do that uh, you can just um, well add your colors right here and just make sure that your text is separate um, or you could go and edit gradient and actually tie this up a little bit and this could also work so we're going to do it like this right now uh, make this the same kind of brown so pick with your eyedropper right here and then another one right here and again with the eyedropper we're going to pick this color so now we have these uh, gradients in both of our text so this also uh, looks a little bit better um, so we're going to click OK now and there we go we have our text then I'm going to duplicate my text and on the bottom text I'm going to rename this to kind of rim light press S on the keyboard and I'm going to uncheck this aspect ratio thicker so the constraint pr pr proportion I'm going to uncheck this and I'm going to set it at 99.5 and then we have it a little bit smaller um, yeah behind it I'm going to open up my options right here and I'm actually going to delete my layer styles. So click on the layer styles and then press delete on your keyboard and now we have this kind of highlight in the background I'm going to add an effect generate fill and here we can pick like a nice uh, bright yellow color so we have some nice highlights here um, on the edges of our text okay duplicate it once more put this on the bottom and this is going to be our 3d kind of um yeah feel so we're going to press s in the key uh, on the keyboard again and now we're going to make it 99 and we're going to change the color to a darker kind of um 
yeah, color. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's pick something like this. And actually, we can bring this size a little bit up to so 99.7, so we have a little bit less of this on the edges, and this looks pretty great. Okay, so I'm going to close everything down, and then I'm going to create a new composition, and this is going to be our fractal noise texture. And then I'm going to add a new texture to it, well, a new solid layer. And I'm going to make it comp size and just uh, well, click OK. Go to Effect Noise and Grain. And here I want to add Fractal Noise to it. And for the transform, I'm going to change it to 5. Uh, so we have a very small kind of texture right here. We can also go and change all the fractal types. It's completely up to you. But I just want some kind of grunge uh, texture to my text. I'm going to duplicate this layer. So click on the layer, Control and D to duplicate or edit duplicate right here. And then I'm going back to my transform settings and I'm going to change it to scale 2. And uh, toggle the switches right here if you don't see the mode here, right here. Um, I'm going to change my transfer mode actually to uh, a soft light and now we're going to see uh, it's going to um, well add a little bit of small elements right here you can see them appearing in the background you can also go and duplicate it once more and maybe increase the size now to something like 15 and that's going to just add some variety in your background so you can see that it's uh, really changing it up a little bit. So this looks pretty cool as a texture. I'm going to use this one and I'm going back to my main comp. Well, actually I'm going to uh, for my main comp, yes. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to bring in my fractal noise texture on top of my title. And then I want to click on my title and actually again hold control and press D on the keyboard to duplicate this, bring it on top of our fractal noise. And we're going to uncheck this or actually it doesn't really matter. Then we're going to click on our title on the top and toggle the switches again until you see the track mat right here. We're going to click um, for alpha mat like so and that's going to um, pick, well it's going to look at the layer above and it's just going to show whatever it's seeing right here. So it's only the text that you're going to see and now we have this texture right here. Of course you will have to change the blending mode so you can go and click on one of these and then hold shift and then plus on the keyboard to actually toggle through all the options that you have for the transparency, well for the overlay mode. So this one looks pretty cool um, but you can go and uh, look for a few different ones. Okay, so I think I'm going for overlay, like so, or actually, maybe classic color dodge. Okay, so this looks pretty cool. You can press T on the keyboard and lower this texture if you don't want it to be as intense. Uh, as you can see right now, we really have a nice texture to it, and it's going to change up the title, give it a little bit more detail. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, close everything down and select my first title and then select, um, well, actually everything. Everything is currently for the title and go for layer, pre-compose and rename it to title design, for example, and click OK. So now we have it, um, well, nice packed up right here. Then I'm going to create a new solid layer and this is going to be our background noise and this is going to be like the clouds that we see in the preview. Uh, so we're going to add an effect noise and grain and add a fractal noise again. Um, I'm going to change my complexity to something like 12. Um, it's going to add a little bit more detail as well. And then I'm going to hold alt and press on the stopwatch of my evolution and, and enter right here time times 250. And that's going to add a little bit of animation to my background as you can see right here. Then I'm going to hold alt and also click well open up transform right here and hold alt and click on the stopwatch for offset turbulence. And then I'm going to open brackets value, open brackets zero, close brackets comma, open brackets uh, value, open brackets one, close brackets, um, plus time times 100 for example and then close the brackets and that's going to add a little bit of animation like so and actually I added my time evolution uh, to the wrong part and this is for the X value and this is for the Y value so I'm going to copy it behind uh, the bracket of the zeros. What this expression is actually saying is just it's going to look for the value for X and then comma value for Y and these uh, ones and zero is actually just an indication of zero is equal to x and one is equal to y. And then we're going to add this expression to just add some animation to just the x expression right here, you can see it. So now we have this kind of animation, uh, which looks pretty cool. 
Okay, so once we have done that, it's uh, like the hardest part of this tutorial, uh, which is still easy. Uh, so yeah, we're going to click on this layer, hold control and press D on the keyboard. And again, we're going to change up the uh, transform a little bit so you can uh, increase the transform. You can also press E twice on the keyboard. And right here, you can also change uh, the settings a little bit. Maybe you want this one going slower and maybe uh, a little bit faster over here. And you can change the settings a little bit and that's also going to help with the variation in the background. I'm going to the mode right here. I'm going to pick um, like a multiply. You can go again and duplicate it once more, maybe transform again and make it even bigger. And there we go. So now we have a lot of variation and we have a nice looking background. Now what I want to do is actually select all of my background and go to layer, pre-compose it again. And we're going to rename this uh, to background. This is going to be our background packed in. So click OK and drop this below our text. Open up the background composition and right here I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to rename this to vignette and then I'm going to apply an effect color correction curves to it and we're going to make this a little bit darker like so. And then I'm going to pick my ellipse tool right here in the mask and I'm going to double click on this ellipse and that's going to make an ellipse all over my canvas right here and I'm also going to change uh, it to subtract right here. Open up the mask settings and we can increase our feather like so. So now we have kind of a, a darker part on the edges. You can also play with the expansion a little bit if you bring this in. It's going to be a little bit darker on the edges. You can still bring it even less, uh, well, more down. Um, but I think this already looks pretty good. And what you can do as well is go back to the project settings. And before we change anything, we actually uh, hold Alt and click right here. So we get 32 bits per channel. And then we are going to have more colors to work with. I prefer to work with this, uh, well, that way. Okay, click, right click again, new and add a new adjustment layer. And this is going to be our color. So uh, we're going to add an effect color correction and add a tint to our adjustment layer. And right here we can just change our white to be uh, like a kind of uh, cyan green color, like so. Uh, maybe desaturate a little bit, a little bit more blue. Click OK. And then for the blacks we can uh, go for a really blue color, uh, but just dark enough like so. And there we go. So now we have a nice background. And as you can see, uh, it's going to look like some like some kind of um, yeah, smoky, um, yeah, like a smoky background. OK, uh, so go back to the main comp and there we have it. Uh, we can still apply an effect to the background so we can add like a curves if we want to add some more contrast. So maybe you bring this down and bring this up a little bit. Just um, be careful with what you do. I think the color for the tint uh, in the shadows is a little bit too bright. So I'm actually going to I make it blue but very dark like so okay back to the main comp and there we go so now we have a nice decent background um, I'm also going to maybe for the first um, background I'm going to add a little bit more scale to the first kind of shadow so um, okay I'm going to keep it as it is right here and for the mask well everything apart from that looks pretty good Okay, then we can uh, right click new and add a new solid layer. Make sure that this layer is black. We're going to rename this to flare and click OK. Then I'm going to add an effect generate lens flare right here. And I'm going to change my lens type to a 105 millimeter prime. And then I'm also going to zero out my settings right here. So actually this is going to be 960 by 540. And that's going to center out our flare right here. And if you are going to decrease the brightness so you don't see it on the edges, uh, that's what we want. So something like this. And there we go. So we have our flare. I'm also going to put this on top right here and then I'm going to scale it uh, just like so a little bit so we can actually push it down, change the aspect ratio a little bit and I think this one looks pretty good. Then I'm also going to apply an effect color correction curves to it so we have a little bit more contrast to our flare. You can also bring the intensity back up if you want to. Um, yeah, Play around with everything so we get a nice result just like this actually. Then I'm going to create a new solid layer and this time we're going to make our solid white. Click OK and this is going to be our flare um, kind of rim and click OK. And then I'm going to pick my rectangle tool right here and I'm going to drag a thin line like so. OK. Press F on the keyboard and this one we're going to feather it 
uh, like so and also um, well feather it to like 35 then we're going to click on our layer and duplicate it and we're going to lower well uncheck this one for a second and we're going to press T on the keyboard for our first layer and just lower it until we have a nice subtle kind of look to it if actually if you're animating this and you don't want to see your mask you can click right here so you can actually focus on the results so I think uh, we can keep it at 7 and then for the next rim light we can check this on again press M twice on the keyboard and right here we can change our feather to something like 5 and just make it a lot smaller so we have a nice thin line like this okay maybe change it to like two okay so now we have a nice harsh light maybe five is okay okay we can we can keep it as this maybe a little bit bigger or we can also play with the opacity maybe it's a little bit too intense right here um, but just play around with it uh, until you get a satisfying result and then you can click on that layer and add again an ellipse and just start from the center hold control and drag something like this here and then we can also change this to an intersect and there we go and what you will see now is that we only have like the inside here and if you're going to open up that mask and add feather to it we're going to get something like this which looks pretty cool we can also copy this mask copy it so control C and then go to uh, this layer just make sure that you select it like so and go to the in this layer and we're going to paste it again and also open the masks and changes to intersect this is something you have to redo uh, but as you can see uh, the result is pretty cool okay so we can close everything down and we can actually uh, position these in the center of our flare okay for our flare we're going to change it well we're going to click on our flare hold shift and click uh, all the way to the top so we have everything about the flare together and then we're going to change our mode to a screen and there we go we have our flare we can actually bring it like right here close to the text now we have a nice lens flare close to the text we can also click on this lens flare itself and hold alt and click on the stopwatch for the lens brightness and then uh, if you click right here we can add wiggle comma maybe three comma ten and close the parentheses and click away and that's going to add a little bit of animation in the brightness of your flare bit it's going to be very subtle in this case but you can see that it's flickering a little bit so um, yeah this is to change it up a little bit more okay now we're going to um, create a new layer again, solid, and we're going to rename this to particles and these are going to be our particles that we're going to use in the background. And then we're also going to create a new composition and make this 300 by 300 and this is going to be our particle. We actually want to create a new solid layer, make sure that this layer is also black and click OK, OK. And there we go uh, we're going to toggle on the transparency grid so we can actually see what we're going to do on this solid and then we're going to select our pen tool and just draw something like so so just um yeah draw something that you want and it doesn't really matter that much and then we can hold uh, well press page down on the keyboard or just move one frame forward and then edit split layer and we can press m on the keyboard to delete this mask and again create a new kind of shape so this way you get a lot of variation in your particles because we're going to use each uh, shape as a particle and that way, yeah, you can uh, shake it up a little bit. So page down, uh, split the layer, press M on the keyboard, delete the mask and create something new. So you can do this as many times as you want, but I'm going to stop it right here. So I'm going to press page down one more time. So we have three uh, different shapes, press N on the keyboard and actually um, I'm going to um, yeah, just make sure that we just have one frame right here right click trim comp to work area so now we have three layers with each a different kind of shape to it and if we go back to the main comp project manager and add this particle to our composition we can uncheck it right here go to the particles solid right here and we're going to apply effect trap code particular then we're going to uh, open up the emitter and right here in emission extras I'm already going to change the pre-run to 100 so the particles are already spawned right here I'm also going to solo this layer so we can just focus on our particles and I'm also going to toggle on or maybe change the composition settings uh, and the background to a gray color so we can actually see our particles because we're going to change them to a black color and that way we won't be able to see them anymore so um, I'm going to change my emitter type to a box and I'm going to uh, make it a little bit larger in X and Y 
Then I'm going to open up the physics error and I'm going to uh, change the Z to like minus 150. And now our particles are going to fly towards our camera. Maybe we can change it to minus 300. Okay. And for the vo uh, velocity actually on top, we also going to, we're also going to change it to 35. And if we're going to play this, uh, we can see that maybe the animation can be a little bit quicker anyway. So I'm going to change it to minus 600. Okay, so this is the kind of speed that I like. Um, all right, so let's go to our particle tab right here and change the particle type to a textured polygon. Open up the texture tab and change your layer to particle. And that's going to look at this layer as uh, well to create a particle from. And then the time sampling, we're going to click random still frame. Now it's going to look at one of these three frames that we have in that composition and it's going to fr uh, freeze it so we have this kind of shape. Now if we're going to increase our shape, uh, we're going to see that we have different kind of shapes in our particles. Of course this doesn't look as good so we're going to open up our rotation and change the rotation random to 100% and there we go. We can also lower the particles per second to something like 35. And also if we lower this uh, going to size over life, we want to draw something like this. Uh, so we have a nice fade in. So um, they actually kind of um, fade in well in our composition. Also for the life, I want to change this to be a little bit longer. So the life, we can change it to six and we can add a little bit of randomness to our life. And for the opacity over life, I want to make this a little bit larger and just make them fade off like so. Okay, this looks pretty cool. Um, and then for the turbulence field, we can also add a little bit of motion here so we can increase our effect position to like 100 um, or something like that. The fade in time, we're going to change it to zero and the speed to something like 10. Now we have some kind of animation there as well. Okay, so, okay, so that's it for our particles. We're going to uncheck these and put them behind our title. So that's right here. Now they're going to fly from our title. You're going to see them very subtly, uh, very subtle. And then if you're going for our background, I actually want to bright it up a little bit more. So I'm going to um, delete this here and make it a little bit brighter. So we can actually see our particles. And also I'm going to make my particles just a little bit bigger. So size 40. Okay, and uh, maybe particles per second, 20. I'm also going to drag my particles a little bit more to the left because um, they're not completely in frame at the start. And that way we already have some particles flying around, which looks pretty cool. You can also go down here, rendering and motion blur and turn on the motion blur and change it to like maybe 1000. And that way we're going to get some motion in our particles. And maybe for the opacity of our life, I'm going to add a little bit more so we actually see them a little bit longer on frame. Okay, so there we have it. Now we want to click on our particles, uh, so the particle layer, and also hold Ctrl and press D on the keyboard. And this time we're going to change our particle type to just a sphere. We're going to decrease the size to something like 3 and also add some randomness to our size, maybe like 2. And there we go. Also for this and uh, these particles, we actually actually want to add a little bit of randomness in the size as well. So we have a little bit more variation. Um, I forgot about that. Okay, so go back to our new particle layer and right here what we want to do is also decrease the particles per second to something like one or maybe two. Uh, so we have just a few of these and then for the color we want to change it to a nice kind of um, orange color. So it's like uh, these kind of fire flakes. And there we go. We can also go uh, right here and increase the opacity boost to something like 10. And that way you're going to see them a little bit better. And if you're not satisfied with how they come, uh, you can also go in here and change the random seed so you can play with that as well. Okay, so like this one is a little bit more obvious. Uh, you can still look at a few more options. 
I actually like this one. I'm going to keep it as it is. You can also increase the particles per second if you want to, but I think this looks great. Okay, so now it's time to actually do our camera animation. So I'm going to toggle the switches, click on my background, make this a 3D layer, press P on the keyboard and change it to 1000. And we're going to press S on the keyboard and scale our background until it fills the entire uh, thing again. So we have something like this. For our particles, we don't have to change it to a 3D layer as particular already consists 3D. And then for our layer with our title and our flares, we're going to make all of these 3D as well. So just drag it like so. And these are all the layers you should make 3D. Right click new and add a new camera. And we're going to click OK. Put the camera on top and we're going to the beginning of our timeline. Press P on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch. Maybe zoom out a little bit until your background is completely in frame like so. And then move all the way till the end. And maybe zoom in like so. And then right here at like one second and a half. We want it to actually zoom in a little bit quicker. So we're going to increase this a little bit more Then hold, hold control and click on this keyframe. That's going to make a circle kind of keyframe. And if we open up our graph editor, just make sure that you're working in the speed graph right here and we can smooth this out a little bit. So we have a nice kind of smooth motion right here. Uh, maybe bring it up a little bit more and there we go. So that would uh, like, zoom in with our camera quite fast. So we have something like this, okay. Okay, so I can actually see that I added a little bit too much wind in Y so uh, in Z right here. So I'm going to change this back to minus 200 and for these particles as well. And for our first one, I'm going to lower the particles per second to something like 10. Okay, so the animation can go a little bit quicker in the beginning. So I'm going to drag this keyframe all the way until here and open up our graph editor again. So I'm going to uh, hold control again and click until we have this circle and open up my animation right here and drag it in like so. Okay bring this up a little bit like so. So we have a, a nice gradual fade right here. Okay, so this one looks pretty cool. Um, what we want to do now is go and add a new adjustment layer to finish it off. We're going to rename this to optics and we're going to add an effect to go to the effects and presets and add optic compensation apply this to our adjustment layer. We're going to change this to 100 and reverse the lens distortion. Maybe we can go even higher to 150 um, or 120 and click on the stopwatch for the field of view. And then right here at the exact same frame where it's actually stopping, we can change it to zero, press U on the keyboard to reveal our keyframes right here and press F9 on the keyboard or right click keyframe assistance, easy ease. And then uh, we have something like this as animation. So it actually slams in a little bit. And this might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to change it back to 100. The animation also goes a little bit too fast. It's not really necessary to have that much motion, uh, but you can go and tweak the animation right here. So maybe you want it to be zoomed in a little bit more as at the start, um, but just play around with these settings and that's basically it. Then for the light leaks, I used our light leaks from our website, which you can buy in a pack of 100 elements, or you can go to the freebies page and there we have five for free. And if you import these, we can pick one like uh, this one here, import it and put it on top of everything and just toggle the switches and change the blending mode to a screen. And then at the beginning, you would have a little bit of um, kind of this flare. I'm going to actually start it right here, drag it over and press T on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch and a, free f a few frames in, or actually I'm going to start it right here. This one looks actually pretty cool. 
click create a new keyframe and a little bit farther away I'm going to set it at zero and now we're going to have a nice kind of a flash how it comes in and if you don't want the yellow part you can just uh, go and click on the fast film burn go to effects color correction hue and saturation and play with the hue so it becomes a little bit more kind of um, red toned and that way you get something like this which is pretty cool so uh, you can really go and change the colors to whatever you actually want if you want a green color this also could look pretty cool maybe fits the mood a little bit better and yeah so that's it um, definitely check out our website with the link in the description if you enjoyed watching this tutorial uh, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more if you come up with some really cool results definitely link them in the comments below so I can check out what you can come up with uh, I would love to see that and yeah that's it for this tutorial see you in the next one goodbye <laughs>